Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video on this recently re-released product from Hobby King. This is the Hobby King AXN floater jet. Now, although it's called a floater jet, it's actually propeller based and it is a perfect model for those of you looking to come into the fixed wing part of the hobby. Now, I did a video recently about helping a quadcopter pilot learn to fly and in that video we used a Bixler. But this is a very, very similar model, slightly smaller, slightly more compact and slightly cheaper. And so it's perfect for those of you who are looking to take your first tentative steps, be it from quadcopter into fixed wing or the first steps into the hobby. So in this video, what I want to do is show you how it comes with the box, show you how quickly it goes together, uh, show you some flying footage and kind of give you my views at the end. But to let the cat out of the bag so you don't have to wait to the end of the video, this gets two big thumbs up from me. This is a beautiful plane and probably the one that I would recommend to anybody coming to me today to get into the hobby. So while I unbox this thing, let me just go through the specs. Uh, the box itself isn't particularly big because the wings are provided in two halves. The longest thing in here is the main fuselage and the assembly is really, really simple. So this is made of molded EPO foam, which is nice and tough. There's probably only one place on here that has a potential to get damaged in the event of a landing, but I'll cover that at the end. Um, this is super stable. The way the wings are designed, both their high position in the model and also the upturned ends, means that it is very, very docile and has very, very gentle stall characteristics. Decals are all applied nicely. They're using their standard way of uh, differentiating between the top and bottom surface of the plane. Servos are already installed. There's room for a carbon spar to go through the wings for extra rigidity. And you might have spotted, and we'll come back to this in a minute, the wings are slightly different at the ends. They're designed to lock together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So the really cool thing is there's no screws in order to fit these wings in position. They just push home and they kind of interlock in the main body of the model and you're ready to rock and roll. Wingspan of this thing is 1280 millimeters. The fuselage length is a little bit shorter, 830 millimeters. The motor on the back of the main body is a 2212 3S outrunner. The propeller is a little dinky 5x5 five five inch prop. Um, I only got one piece in this. Um, it said two pieces in the listing that I looked at. Mine only had one. But to be honest, you're going to have to do something pretty horrendous to break that prop. Speed controller is a 20 amp speed controller. And that's performed beautifully in the flying that I've been doing with it here. All the servos are pretty standard analog 9 gram servos. There's one in each of the wings to control the ailerons. Then there's two inside the body that controls the rudder and the elevator. Now, to get this thing to fly, you're going to need a four-channel transmitter and receiver. So, because you're going to need one channel for the ailerons, one channel for the rudder, one channel for the elevator, and one for the ESC. And the only other thing you're going to need is a list 1800 to 2200 milliamp hour 3S battery in the listing on the website. I would personally go for the 2200. It'll help you get the center of gravity where it needs to be under the wing. So to build the model is very simple and straightforward. The first thing you need to do is attach the tail. Now, the way it works is there's two little kind of Z bends here. You need to pop them into position. Now, I initially installed it as per the manual here. So I'm going to put it into the bottom hole. I would actually put it into the middle hole for your elevator. If you do it that way, then you'll get the throws in the manual. But what that means is with it through the hole like that, all you need to do is put a little bit of glue underneath and then just push the horizontal stabilizer into place. Use a slow setting CA glue, something that's foam safe. It doesn't come in the box, so that's also something that I would order along with the model. Just make sure that you've coated all the surfaces. Just make sure you're not getting the glue anywhere you don't want it. Once the horizontal stabilizer is in, then the next job is to fit the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. And it's exactly the same procedure to put that on. So work the hinge, always work foam hinges like this before you install them just to free them up a little bit. They're always slightly stiff if they haven't been used before and it just helps the servos work properly. Again, pop it through the very last hole in the rudder and then put some glue down in the hole around the edges of the little tab that goes in 
and then push that home. That will also lock the horizontal stabilizer and leave that alone for a couple of hours for the, like, the glue set up. And that's the tail all done. To install the wings is all simple and straightforward as well. I use this little trick. It's a piece of pool noodle with, uh, with about a big chunk cut out. It's great for building planes like this. It, it keeps it all level on the bench. So what you need to do is get the carbon spar that comes in the box and push it into the wing. It goes in just in front of where the servo lead comes out of. Now, once that's in position, then we're going to slide the other wing into it um, over the top and it's going to lock in the middle. So first job is to push the wing in place. Don't use any glue. It's going to stay in place on its own. And it also means that if you are unlucky enough to bust a wing and you need to repair it, then you don't have to try and break glue seams or get a long thin knife and start cutting foam. It'll just pluck out. Similarly, you can actually remove the wings for transport, which is a great idea for this. It makes it much easier to carry around, although it's slightly narrower than the Bixler series of models from Hobby King. Uh, having only that slightly shorter wingspan can make all the difference between it fitting in your car or not. Now there's a Y cable that you're going to have to connect all both of these servos to that comes in the bag. So I'll pop that on there first, then slide the other wing into position, connect the Y cable up, fish around and then pull gently on that Y cable while you slide the other wing in place. That's to keep the wires out of the way and you'll feel it kind of lock into the other wing and that's the wings done too. To set all of the control surfaces is really nice. The control surfaces on mine were pretty spot on straight out the box. There is a little adjusters on the servos inside the canopy. Uh, so if you have a little hex driver, you can use those to get everything set up as per the manual. So build time was very quick. It took me about 20 minutes to build the whole thing. And I gave it a couple of hours for the glue to go off. So what's it like to fly? It is very, very nice indeed. If you've ever seen a Bixler flying or one of those other kind of high winged models, then this is behaving exactly the same. With that battery plugged right away into the nose to get the central gravity as close to 50 millimeters from the front wing as per the manual, and with the throws set as per the manual as well, it took off and it was very, very docile. A little bit of trimming to the right, a little bit of trimming on the elevator just to make sure that it was flying straight and level and it was pootling around really happily on about a quarter throttle. In fact, this is one of those models that you can just cut the engine entirely and just float and soar around. It doesn't like coming back down to the ground and it inspires a ridiculous amount of confidence. If you give it the beans and give it more power, then it's absolutely capable of loops and rolls and basic aerobatics. But because it is designed to be so stable, you will struggle to do some things like rolls nice and cleanly. That's not really what this plane is all about. But it does mean that it's not just a beginner pilot that will end up with a big grin on their face when they're flying this. The stall characteristics, thanks to the wing design and wing layout, is absolutely great. It is super gentle. So if you do do something stupid, run out of airspeed, and the wing stalls, all that happens is the nose just drops. None of We don't have any nasty wing tip tendencies. It doesn't try and do a spiral of death into the ground. It is really nice and flies almost like it has a stabilizer in it already. Now I'm flying on a relatively calm day, have a little bit of wind across the field and that's what I'm launching into. Uh, but this is absolutely lovely to fly. Now this video uh, that's here now is from my maiden flight and you can see how quickly it starts to feel very natural. So in summary, what do I like? Well. I, as you've probably already guessed, I like an awful lot about this. I've been looking for the perfect trainer to recommend people for a very long time. Those of you that have been watching the channel for many years will know that I've continued to get planes in to give them a go to see which would be the best one to recommend. And I think I found the perfect one. This is my recommendation if you want to get into the fixed wing part of the hobby. I like the design. I like the high motor. It's out the way. I like the fact there's no gear so you can belly land it. I like the way that you can hand launch it without worrying about the prop taking the ends off your fingers. It is super simple to build. Two lots of glue for the tail sections. Snap in the wings. Set your throws and your radio up and you're ready to go. It is very easy to fly. It is one of those models that just wants to fly around. In fact, let me show you while I'm talking. Let me just cut the power and you'll see how long it takes to come down into the grass. 
it's very very stable and will cruise well it will actually soar and float and glide as well as do some pretty decent speeds when you open up that throttle there aren't any screws or fixings which for those big wings makes them easy to take apart for transport and also to replace if something gets broke the tail sadly is glued in which does mean that if you break the tail then that is going to be something that you're going to have to reach for the hot glue for but with being EPO foam, uh, my experience is with a little bead of hot glue, uh, you can have it back together in 10 seconds and you can be back out at the field flying around with that big silly grin on your face again. Only a couple of things to be aware of here. Um, the nose is a little bit slim. There is one little space in front of the servos behind where the battery fits in, which is a little thin. Uh, that, I suspect, is where it's going to fail if you do accidentally bring it in nose first and hit the ground. I think that's where it's going to crumple or get snapped. You could glue a couple of blocks of foam into that position just to strengthen that part up so it survives crashes that's a little bit better. I've seen a couple of pilots already add flight controllers to this. There is that little bit of space that we've just talked about uh, that needs reinforcing that you could maybe squeak a little flight controller into. But to be honest, I think there are better planes to put flight controllers in with iNav or I do Pilot and those things. See my series on those for that. This is such a beautiful plane to fly out the box without any support. It's super gentle, super forgiving, and just so much fun to fly. I don't think you need any of that support. And and using it when you're learning isn't a great idea anyway because then you've got to wean yourself off those additional pieces of help too. I'd recommend getting the heavier 2200 milliamp hour battery. It will give you 20 to 30 minutes of flight time depending on how you fly and you will need it to get the center of gravity right. Push it really far into the nose. First time you put a battery in you think it's not going to fit but the pads inside the nose of the craft do a great job of holding onto the battery and stopping it from moving. And the last couple of things, the travel needed on the elevator in the manual is tricky to get that if you put the connector on the very outer hole as shown in the manual. I would recommend putting it in the middle hole of the elevator when you attach the elevator and that works a little bit better for me. Last comment on this, the thing I really love about the manual is the way that Hobby King have actually written it so that you can learn how to fly. So this is obviously aimed at the beginner. The way it talks about how to set it up, how to use it like a big paper airplane so that you can make sure it's trimmed properly and you can practice throwing it and move on and then practice the landings. It's a really nicely laid out manual and I wish more manuals like this had this kind of detail in it because a lot of newer pilots get their model, just about manage to get it set up, and then go out to the field, throw it, and within two seconds have destroyed the thing as it slams into the ground at full throttle. So props to Hobby King for including that. I would recommend following each of the steps here in the manual very closely, because it will give you the best chance of getting in the air. So from here on in, if anyone asks me what plane should I get, I want to learn to fly, this is going to be my answer. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists, so if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.